So hi everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and I make videos about the law and most of the time about the FE1 to be completely honest. So we are continuing on, continuing on, continuing on, Join your voice goes very weird. We are continuing on from last week and tonight we are starting with um, property law. Um, so I've been getting a lot of corrections actually for property law, a lot of people um, who've contacted me have failed this one in particular so we're going to have a look first and foremost let's go to the first question so the first question was an essay question which asked to critically evaluate so when it's when it's a critical evaluation it's your opinion it's very important that you give some um critical analysis on what you're saying that you're not just descriptive that you show that you've thought about the legislation and its rationale and you come to some kind of a conclusion. The legislative protection afforded spouses, <laughs> they forgot the word to, in relation to family property in Ireland, support your answer with reference to appropriate authority. Now, most people here will go away and give me everything but the kitchen sink um, about the Family Home Protection Act 1976 and about Section 3 consent. And that's what I would imagine most people would have done. The thing, I mean, if you're to be critical about the Family Home Protection Act is that sometimes it could be used as a stick to beat the transferring spouse with, as in the other spouse, the non-owning spouse could withhold consent and sometimes you'd have to take them to court uh, to prove that it's unreasonable. So that would be one thing I would say. Also as well, like, if you're purchasing family home you have to make sure you have a family home declaration and all of that and um and actually what's after happening now in practice is that whenever you're selling a gaff you need a family home declaration to you know from the seller that it's not a family home so yeah like the act has created a lot of red tape around the transferring of property but i guess it's legitimate in that non-owning um non-owning spouses are protected that's what i would have said anyway question two was a problem question now i had a little bit of an argy bargy um with one of my clients about this because he was like this is um straight up an easement okay and i so so this this is a um I'm going to give you the facts real quick. This is a, a tenant landlord um, situation whereby um, the landlord, um, sorry, the lease stipulates that there's specific use for this basement as an Indian restaurant, um, but there's no sewerage there, which is needed as part of operating a restaurant. Um, so um, the the tenant has gone and hired a company to install new pipes which run all the way through the property so the whole property um, that is retained by the landlord so most people would have like ran their mouths off here and wrote about Edinburgh Park and blah 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 but all of the answers I've seen on this have been crap and the reason is because most people jump into the easements part and they're like oh it's an easement it's an easement but they don't tell me um why this is an easement they go through the test but they don't tell me that it's because the landlord isn't in physical occupation of that piece of the land as in see the thing with easements is you need two separate owners but there's an exception here to the test around easements that if part of the as in the the Serbian tenement is occupied by a tenant that does allow for an easement. But the other big gaping issue here is that normally in a commercial lease, um, the tenant wouldn't have to do such works as sewerage. Like what kind of lease puts that onus on the tenant? So I, I would have said here, it was like kind of 50-50. You would talk about the easement and you would talk about commercial leases and about how, um, about, you know was it stipulated in the lease because the question you're you're advising here the landlord so you'd ask the landlord like what did you put in the lease whose obligation is it to look after um this so like is it full repair um 
full repair and insurance, like a Fry lease it's called, or, or are there repairs even mentioned in the lease? And nobody who has given me their paper um, has come up with that. So yeah, like a few smart people were like, yeah, Wong v Bowman Properties, it's identical to this, but like they literally learned off an exam report from years ago and the examiner now is like no that's not that's not enough i need a little bit more analysis so that's why people aren't passing the question even though they knew it was an easement okay question three was an essay question that says should the contractual license be regarded as an interest in land in irish law discuss your answer with reference to applicable case law now i don't really go through licenses in my ebook because i think it's just too nice nice niche <laughs> so yeah i don't bother with licenses uh, or quasi proprietary rights as they call them i just don't care about them they don't come up that often and yeah who cares anyway question four is problem question um so yeah you always get like two succession questions um you get two succession questions on the property paper one is usually around like legal right chair did people um did, were people provided for under a will and that was the answer to this one like it's the same every single year and they'll probably be like I can almost write it for you that normally be bequests given to people during their lifetime so someone may have been given like I don't know a hundred thousand on their 18th birthday and it was kind of you know between everyone like if I give you this money you're not getting it when I die that kind of a thing so bequests uh, inter vivos during someone's life and then the other question you normally get in the FE1 is around testamentary uh, capacity and um, so section 78 and all that so that will be the other question so like you can literally bank on those two questions in property and if you don't well I don't know what to tell you my ebook goes through those like very very thoroughly uh, question five was an essay question that said according to Wiley he's the best by the way Wiley on land law like I read that book so many times when I was in college like unreal very dense though and oh very dense one of the most striking features of our land law has been the extent to which it has been influenced by the principles of equity and yes that is very much true for example the bona fide purchaser for value but I'm not going to go down through that because you have to critically discuss it with legal authority and yeah I mean that essay is way out it's far out essay Question six was a problem question that asked, um, seems to me like an adverse possession, someone was like growing vegetables in a plot behind their house, typical, and then look at some timing around that and who owns the plot. I mean, adverse possession questions are so easy and they're so well covered in my ebook and I would have said that most people would have done fine there. Yeah, question seven was the essay question around capacity and formalities around wills. And then question eight was a problem question. So following a night out, this lad decides to take a shortcut through the fields. He trespassed on someone's property. So we already know if he found something, he's not in the right. Um, but finders keepers, so how does finders keepers relate to ownership of property? He tripped over something which was half buried in the soil. So it was half buried in the soil. Upon further investigation, I realized it discovered what appeared to be a very valuable silver chalice. Oh my God. Margaret, who had taken a 99 year lease of the field the previous year, claimed that she should have been entitled to the find. So you have the um, land lord, the lessee, and now you have the finder. Word got around the village. Uh, Margaret's landlord, Tim, heard about the find and claimed it was his. Um, however, David now claims that since he was the one to discover the chalice, he should be entitled to keep it. So always ask yourself, who's your client? Here, it's David. And I'd be like, do you know what, David? It's none of yours because anything like that belongs to the state. And by the way, actually, um, if you guys are into like archaeology or um, like the Royal Prerogative or Treasure Trove, um, definitely watch The Dig on Netflix with Ralph Fiennes. It's it's really, really nice um, film. And I like, I'm not really that much into films because I spent all my time working on Law Hero in my spare time and I'm such a weirdo. But um, I would really recommend that one. So yeah, that was Property Law. I thought it was grand. Um, 
the essay on the impact of equity um that was probably the only weird part of this uh, exam but exam paper but otherwise it was grand i am noticing a trend to me it seems like the property paper is being marked more accurately i would say it's become definitely not so easy to get high marks in it so yeah definitely dot your i's and cross your t's watch your p's and q's in that exam don't write irrelevant stuff they don't like it it seems and you know you have to realize that in property and a lot of people don't realize this there may be more than one topic like i mean it's just like it's just like tort it's just like criminal it's not going to be just adverse possession like for example in that one which i just mentioned there was commercial lease and easement not just easement and that's why so many people fail that question like i haven't seen one person to pass that question in the exam papers i've reviewed so yeah just be a little bit more lateral um thinking because a lot of people are just like oh pipes sewerage easements and they're not even thinking that like it's a landlord tenant relationship and they're not going through that properly because they don't understand um the characteristics that are set out in real and borough park anyway i'm not going to wrap it on anymore um check out my ebook i've already put up some pictures of it but it's on uh, lawhero.eu and i'll see you in the next video thank you very much for watching and subscribing supporting this youtube channel um i'm pretty sure it's unique so it's only as good as the people watching it otherwise it's just me talking to myself in this room <laughs> okay and bye everybody